There are so many different kinds of sugars and sweeteners on the market today that figuring out which one to use could be quite confusing. This is the part where I talk. Sorry. <laughs> was it was it another zone there? That, All right. That doesn't happen often. Sorry about that. I'm with you now. All right. This is what I need to tell you. Dr. Joe is in our kitchen today to help make shopping a little more simple. Thanks, guys. We're going to be talking about something that many of us love. We're going to talk about sugars. There are a lot of myths out there. Um, I am joined by Sarah Krieger. She is a personal chef and a registered dietitian. So how do people make a choice? So I did a little research, and there are over 40 different kinds of added sugars. The bottom line is that they all have the same amount of calories when it comes down to portions. So we have to look at the different labels. But so these are some common ones in the front here, raw sugar, brown, granulated. And there's a lot of alternative added sugar um, products, if you will, that are out in the market as well. And the, here's the bottom line with these. I mean, they all have different flavor profiles for a different mm -hmm. recipe is cool, but it's added calories. And when we looked at some of these, 140 calories for two tablespoons, uh, that's more than honey or, or maple syrup even. And again, it's that marketing. You'll see, they'll say, well, this one has magnesium or this one has electrolytes. But when you really look at the amount, it's really not that much more if there is any at all. And the other myth is everyone hears high fructose corn syrup. They hear the word fructose. They think, oh my gosh, I have to try a product with less fructose. Fruit has fructose. Yeah. It's not the enemy. Um, we just don't want lots of it. And I think the high fructose corn syrup, a lot of that was put into a lot of things that we were we were taking on as treats. Right. And, and of course, a lot of that was in soft drinks. This is a stevia plant that my mother grew in her garden, and she's so sweet. I mean, it, what, we can take a leaf off, and you can taste it, and it will taste sweet. And you can even brew it into a little bit of a homemade stevia syrup. But most people don't have time like myself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so there are other products on the market. And then for baking and cooking, of course, we can control how much added sugar or uh, stevia that we want to add and you can still have a terrific product at the at the end which will give you less calories which is what we want we want less calories and as far as applesauce and apple juice those are nice to add sugar to yes. whatever you're making but again we are talking about calories and yeah. the more refined that juice is then the less fiber is in it what I brought I didn't make those I have to confess but those <laughs> balls are made with raisins and dates so it's an alternative form of natural sugar mm -hmm. that does have that fiber included in it I made a sweet potato bread with the stevia splenda sweetener and you're able to again control you can do cup for cup or half cup to half cup or because if you're if you're cooking at home or using any kind of recipes, I like to modify and go see how low you can go. And you can keep cutting back on sugar and you can do that with sweet tea, especially if you're going into a restaurant, for example. Just ask for more unsweetened tea than sweet tea and keep decreasing the amount of sweet tea. And before you know it, you're gonna be absolutely fine with having less sugar. And then if you use the packets, you can you know use those there in restaurants as well. So again, we'll have this recipe on our website. I'm gonna have some nice links to tell you a lot about sugar and some of the alternatives out there and the pros and the cons. Again, join me on Facebook, on Twitter. Back to you.